Hi, my name is Andrew Fratchis, and welcome back to another Flow episode here. So in this one here, we're going to continue along with the theme of opportunity management. And we're looking at making an easier way to clone records um, and clone your opportunity as well as the related items on that. So we're going to use a screen flow in this particular one. Um, as some prerequisites, you're going to have to create an action um, on the opportunity, and that's going to reference this flow. So you're going to launch the flow from this action. If you've been following on with the series, a uh, previous video we did, we talked about the importance of creating a variable called record ID. So once again, I'm going to create that variable and I'm going to have that here. Now, the importance of this variable and the way you name it, so if you see on my screen here, it's called record capital I D, um, is that when you launch a flow from an action, it has no concept of the record that you launched it from. So the record ID variable is something that Salesforce will automatically store the ID of the record you launched from. So keeping that in mind, we're going to see what our flow does. So firstly, again, similar to the accounts one we did before, we're going to give some options to our users. Now, the reason why this is so powerful and why this is needed versus the standard clone or the clone with related Clone with related, the standard button only allows you to clone certain objects with the opportunity, and that is products, uh, contact role, and opportunity things. All right. So in this aspect, uh, sorry, it's uh, contact roles and products. Uh, in this aspect, we want to expand that to include opportunity teams, tasks, and you can go along further to, you know, if you have custom objects, you can clone them across as well. So I've put some simple checkboxes here. And each checkbox is going to represent what we're asking our users to do. So what objects would you like to clone? That is our first screen. And then after that, we've got our record ID and we're going to do a simple get records. We're going to get the opportunity uh, that launched this flow. So what we are cloning off of, and we're going to store that in a record collection variable. So that automatically is stored. We only want the first record because there should only be one record returned. Then we go to the second screen. Our users will see our second screen now. And uh, as of spring 21, I'm including some, some new features as well. So we've got the multi-column um, for section. Uh, we also have the ability for fields. Now this is in beta, but what I've done is from the record variable, the opportunity previous one, I've added the close date into it as well. So you'll be able to see that there. Um, what we've done here, if you look at it, opportunity name, we set that as a text field and we defaulted it to the value already. So you make it easy for users to clone. Uh, then we've done the amount. Again, we default it. They can change it if they want. The status is the pick list and it's referencing a resource that I created. And the resource is a pick list uh, choice set of the stage name from opportunity. So making sure you create that as well in the process. Then I have a lookup account, um, which is looking up to the account. Maybe we want to change the account. This is associated to in the process. And again, we're defaulting the values here. And same with the lookup to opportunity owner. Close date, however, we're not defaulting values because this is in beta. It doesn't have the ability to default the value, um, but we will have that close date field. And then amount as well. So that's done. After that, um, our flow will go through here now. It will create our opportunity record. So I've mapped some fields accordingly. You know, the, the amount from our previous screen, right? The account ID, uh, we can go grab it from our previous screen as well. So all these values are grabbed from our previous screen. Price book to ID, it's important to map this because you wanna be able to add the products later in your flow. So we map the price book ID of the previous uh, opportunity. So going down, we've got our first decision and we're checking uh, if our checkboxes were ticked on the first flow screen. So we're checking if products are ticked equals yes, then we'll go down this path. We'll check if there are products and we'll get all those products and put them in um, record collection. So opportunity ID equals the record ID. Um, that was the original record we're cloning off of. And then we're going to loop through and create new products. Now, the reason why we're looping through and having this new product inside of it um, is because you need to make sure when you're creating product, you can't set the unit price and the total price, right? That will throw an error and I encounter this while building it out. So you need to make sure that you're only mapping the unit price. So that's why I put the loop in. 
uh, put the create inside of the loop. So we've done that, our products are created now, we check for contact roles, we check that that screen flow aspect is mapped as well, we've checked that it's true. If it is true, we get the contact roles. Again, having a look at this get records element, opportunity ID equals the record that we're cloning off of. And now this time we're gonna loop through and we're gonna empty the ID. So the ID of the contact role record that we just stored, we need to empty that out because uh, Salesforce won't allow you to enter a new ID on create. And when you go to map a record collection variable uh, to a create records, it maps all the fields automatically and maps the ID field as well automatically. So that is not ideal and it will throw an error. So we need to map, wipe that claim. We also need to update the opportunities linking to, to the new opportunity we just created. Then what we're also going to do is create a new collection variable um, and it's a record collection variable. And we're going to assign each one of the products or contact roles or whatever the records are to that. So in this case is the update contact roles and I'm going to add that into that. And then in my create records element, I'm going to go ahead and click multiple and just use that record collection that we've been adding to. That's a very simple technique to make sure that you have it to create records outside of the loop. So again, we do the same similar thing here with opportunity tense. We check that the user ticked it, and they've said true, and we get all our opportunity trains. Opportunity ID equals that record ID again. We loop through, and again, we're looping through the assignment variable, set the ID to null, and we're making sure we change the opportunity ID link to the new one. Then, Again, we're creating another new resource called updated tense. We add this into it. And then finally, once it's finished all the iterations, we go ahead, multiple records, and create them with the updated items. Now going down here, we'll go down through the yes path first, and then I'll talk about what you can see on the no path. So again, decision, final one here, any tasks, yes. We'll grab them, and then we go my tasks. So we'll grab all the tasks that own ID equals user ID and the what ID equals the record ID. So making sure that it's the user that triggered the flows tasks, if they're assigned any, as well as that's associated to the opportunity. Then we've got update tasks, and we'll again, clear it out, update the opportunity ID. New resource here, we're gonna assign that to updated tasks. And finally, we go create tasks, and we're using multiples and the updated task collection variable. Now, what you can see here is an action. And I've used this action from an install package from unofficial SF, and this will be linked in the post that we do um, and the blog associated with this. So grab that install package, a very handy one, because at the end of a flow by default, it doesn't redirect to the new record you created. It stays on the record you're on. Now, you would want to redirect the user to the new record you created. So, I've added in this um, action, which came with the install package. Destination type is record, destination action is view. And I'm using the ID of the new record I created, the new opportunity. And that's the same thing over here on the no part. So let's have a look at all of this in action now. I've got this button here, which I've created myself, which references the screen flow. I click clone and let's say I want products, I want opportunity team and I want contact roles and I want all of them. So I can do that option as well. Next, I'm looking at here, I can have a look and uh, play around with this a little bit. So I changed my account. Maybe I want uh, United Oil and Gas Australia. I'll change this to Australia. I can see that it was set to closed one. I want to change it to prospecting. The amount will leave as is. Um, and the close date, maybe we want to set that to 25th February, or even we can set that to today. And we go to next. This is gonna go through, it's gonna create the records accordingly. And as you can see, it's redirected me to this brand new record I've created. So to prove that, I'll go down here to details and that's it there, right? It's created. So that's the benefit of using that install package I've got. And also this saves a lot of time for your users overall. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and thank you for watching once again.